So with that, we're going to start with the first presenter, who is uh, Jeff Strzok, and take it away. Thanks, Carl. So, uh, so I, I actually hail from Lamberton at the Southwest Research and Outreach Center. Uh, I am a professor here at the department. Uh, my discipline is, is what I call applied soil physics, and I have a 70% research, 30% uh, outreach uh, component to, to my program. Uh, my outreach programs are, are really kind of informed by the research that I do, and I really kind of have two styles of things that, that I do for outreach. One is really looking at more uh, traditional types of things like field days, uh, and then the other one is more contemporary where we're looking at webinars and more technology-driven types of things. Uh, the, the students that I have, some of you may know Tomas Varga who's here in the audience, uh, and uh, he's uh, in LAS, a PhD student of mine. Uh, and then Lu Zhang, uh, she is in bioproducts and biosystems engineering management, and I co-advise her with, with Joe Magner uh, down at BBE. And I supervise three people, uh, Andre Ranavasan, Mark Coulter, uh, and Doug Moody uh, down at the Research Center. Now, uh, for those of you who have never been to the Research Center, we're about two and a half to three hours uh, southwest of the Twin Cities, depending on how fast that you have to drive uh, to get there. Um, now, uh, I have a number of projects that I, I'm uh, taking the lead on. This first one is a, our drainage plots. Um, we've used these for cover crops, nutrient management. Currently, we've got a project that Tomash is working on with some supplemental irrigation, and we'll talk more about that at the end. I've got a slide. Uh, we've got a long-term tillage trial that we've been doing out at the Research Center. Uh, this one uh, just finished with a, uh, a sulfur experiment on it, and currently I'm working with Axel Garcia. We're looking at cover crops, soil water availability, and soil water balances on that site. Um, the next one is uh, our ditch and uh, wetland complex. We have some constructed wetlands there. Those have been mainly for water quality purposes. And we recently finished a project on side inlet controls on that particular site. Uh, working with Andre Ranavasan and Gary Feyerizen and Kurt's Focus and David Muller, we're looking at bioreactors to look at nitrogen and phosphorus uh, mitigation from drainage water from subsurface drains. And then the last project uh, just flashing up here on the screen is part of the Long-Term Agricultural Research Network. Uh, and the LTARN is located at three different sites in Minnesota, at Southwest, uh, at Southern Research and Outreach Center at Waseca, and then up in Grand Rapids. And that uh, project, uh, I, I take some leadership on the soil and the water uh, research that goes into that, uh, that particular project. Uh, the things that drive me, uh, there's a couple of things really thinking about now and into the future is, is food security issues. How are we going to feed all of the people on the planet uh, kind of in a sustainable manner, which really buckles into the environmental part of thinking of, that I have related to the fact that we want to do these things uh, that we're doing in terms of crop production in a, in a sustainable way where we have minimal off-site negative impacts from the agriculture that we're practicing, but also thinking about uh, how do we make sure that we ensure we have enough available resources, for me, water, uh, for crop production. My interest areas, uh, I'll just read the top two uh, bullet points, really looking at uh, soil root zone processes, which uh, you can read that slide there encompasses a lot of fate and transport, soil, water, nutrient types of projects, and then drainage water management, which has been the, the crux of my career, uh, looking at subsurface drainage in many different facets. Uh, and expanding to some supplemental irrigation and bioreactor work. Um, my goal, my personal goal, is to try to minimize these negative offsite impacts uh, while looking at how do we reduce that gap between actual and attainable yields. Um, the projects that we have here I've listed, uh, we've got a number of them, and we have a lot of different collaborators uh, within multiple departments. The water balance work that we're doing is at three locations. We've got multiple instrumentations and uh, uh, collected a lot of data from that site. Some of the more exciting stuff we're doing with roots is, is uh, uh, looking at three different systems, undrained and drained cropland, and looking at perennials. And the really cool part here is, is we start to see some divergence in how the water management that we're doing at the field level is impacting uh, the roots. Uh, distributions out there in the field. And then finally, some of uh, Tomasha's work where we're looking at the water balances, leaf area indexes, and, 
and you'll hear a lot more about his work in the future um, as, as he gets up and presents on those things. Thank you. Perfect.